Now before I jump in and show you how to easily customize the WooCommerce checkout page with this free plugin, I need to let you know that this plugin does a lot more than just allow you to edit the WooCommerce checkout page. So if you want to go ahead and customize pretty much any aspect of what you have in a normal WooCommerce store, single product page templates, shop pages, shopping cart, checkout pages, account pages, success pages, you also got dynamic modules, so if you want to use product variations, you'll have that built in. Quick view, product wish list, comparisons, and filters and pagination. Absolutely tons and tons of options. So if you want to see more tutorials on customizing more of your WooCommerce website, drop a comment down below, letting me know what you'd like to see covered in future videos. Okay. Today, I'll be showing you how to get started customizing your WooCommerce checkout page using the Shop Engine plugin. So let's just jump in and start customizing things. So let's take a quick look at the before and after, exactly what we're going to be working towards in this video. So the first one you can see is a typical WooCommerce checkout. The second one is a customized one, what we're going to create in this video. First thing you're going to need to do is go ahead, search for Shop Engine, install it and activate it. Now I've already gone ahead and done that, so we're all set up and ready to go. Once installed, we have a new section inside the dashboard called Shop Engine. In there, we have various different things. Now I'm going to take a quick look in the modules section, just because I want to show you what's available. You can skip this part if you want, timestamps in the description. So this is where you can enable some of those WooCommerce options, so things like the quick view, swatches, and so on. If we head over to widgets, this is where all of the different elemental widgets are available. Now, by default, all of these are switched on. Just to make things easier, I've gone ahead and turned off all the things that are not specifically required for this particular video. But to enable or disable any of the features is really simple. Click on the option that you want to turn it on or turn it off. So we want this checkout form additional, so I'll turn that on and I'll simply hit save changes. If you want to enable everything, just use the Enable All Widgets option at the top. Now, once you've enabled or disabled any of the widgets or modules that you want, we're ready to go ahead and start building our page. Now, we're going to be working with a template. In this example, it's the Checkout Page template. Now, by default, this is quite difficult to edit inside WordPress. However, when we're using Shop Engine, we can simply use the Templates function. We'll open that up, and inside there, this will list all of the templates, whether they're active or inactive, and we can create, delete, edit, all those kinds of things. As you can see, I've already gone ahead and created a checkout page, and that's what I showed you at the top of this video. However, we're going to make that inactive, and we're going to start completely from scratch. And this is the beauty of working with this. We can click to open this template up, and you can see this gives us the options now to set this as default, or we can just disable it by clicking on No and save our changes. So we might have a checkout page created, but we want, might want to A-B test things. Well, this is a great way of doing things like that. So we can now disable that one. I'm going to come in and we're going to add a new template. Once we do that, you can see we can choose from predefined templates for various different parts of our site. However, we're going to ignore that and we're just going to call this new checkout. We can change the type, and this is again one of those things that this plugin has in abundance is the ability to edit all the key template files for WooCommerce. We're going to change this from single though, and we're going to set this to just simply be our checkout option. We choose that option from there. We'll say we want to set this as default, so it will be active once we've completed it, and then we're just going to say save the changes, edit with Elementor, and that'll open up this in Elementor then so we can start editing. So let's just edit this. And then we open up Elemental as normal. So we can go ahead and start building. If you set up all of the normal widget options, you'll see a heck of a lot more options. I've cut all those out just so we can see the ones to do with the checkout side of things. And you see, currently there are eight options that we're going to use. So now we can go ahead and build that template. Now, when you create your template, you may find that it doesn't actually display your template, your header, your footer, those kinds of things. To rectify that, we need to come down to the settings option, the bottom left. We're going to then change the page layer from Elemental Canvas, and we're going to set this to Elemental Full Width in this example. We're also going to make sure we hide the title just to ensure that nothing shows up. So we might need to go back in after Elemental Refreshes and just set that to hide the title. So now we get our header and footer back, and we can start building things. So the first thing I want to do is put a section at the top that's going to be a full width header. So we're going to add in a new section, single row column, select it, and we're going to make sure that this has a background image. So we're going to go to Style, Choose Classic for the background, choose an image, and I've already downloaded an image to use, and I'm going to insert that. And now we're going to adjust the size of this, the position, and so on. So we'll set the position to be center right. We're going to set the attachment, leave that as default. Repeat, we don't want any repeat on there. And we're going to say we want this to be cover. Next up, we're going to come back into our layout, 
and we're going to set our height. We're going to choose minimum height and we're going to leave this to about 400 pixels. That's perfectly fine. But if you wanted to use viewport height, you could do that. Head back into style. We're going to go into background overlay and we're going to apply an overlay to this. So we'll choose a color. We'll find a very dark color from there and then we'll just simply adjust the opacity to taste. Finally, we're going to drop a heading inside here. So we're going to drag and drop heading. We'll center this, set it to be H3, name this checkout, go into style, and we're simply going to set our text color to be white, and we're going to set our typography. Adjust our weight, and that looks pretty good. So we'll leave that like that. Now we can start building our custom checkout. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a two column single row. We're going to add this option in, and we're going to make a bit of space around this. 50 above and below should be fine. And now we can start adding in the various different components. So the first thing we're going to add in is the checkout order review so people can see exactly what they've added into their cart or what's currently in their cart ready to check out. So this is the first of our options. And as you can see, if we look at the left hand side, we can customize all aspects of this. So we can adjust the table header. So if we want to just change the color on there, the text color, the border, the typography, padding, margin, those kinds of things, we can do all of that. The same goes for the table body. We can adjust all the different parameters inside there, the footer, and we can also assign global fonts if we want to. In this example, the global font applies to the just the widget, not all the different widgets. So for example, if we change this to something like Times New Roman, all the fonts inside this specific widget will now update to use Times New Roman. It's just a quicker way than going into the header, body, and footer and adjusting things inside there if you want to have everything to use the same. We'll just set that back to default for now. Okay, so there's the first part added in. Let's hop over now to our widgets again, and this time we're gonna go and grab the option to do the checkout billing. We'll pop that onto the right-hand side, and that will then insert the billing address form. As you can see, everything you'd expect inside there, including some of the fields that not everybody actually wants. And again, Shop Engine allows us to control those assets as well. So if we come into the field visibility option, you can see this gives us the ability to enable or disable most of the fields that we have available. So we might want to disable the company name, the second address field. We might say we don't want to worry about telephone numbers, and you can see we can enable and disable all those. So this is very useful if you have just digital downloads and you don't need to include full address details and things like that. So pretty cool. You can also control the form container. So if you want to adjust the color, spacing, padding, alignment, those kinds of things, you can do that inside here as well. So for example, if we come up to the options to change the background color, you can see we can select that. That now changes the background color inside there. And again, we can reference the global color setup inside Elementor, or we can customize these by adding our own specific color into the mix. And if you want to go ahead and adjust the label styling, the input, those kinds of things. And again, we have the global font option inside here. We can set the primary and the secondary typography. Primary being things like the labels, secondary being things like the actual information inside each of the fields. So as you can see, it tells you exactly what's going on if you make changes inside there. Let's just go ahead and add a couple more items into our checkout page now, just to make it a little bit more useful. So if we want to allow coupons, for example, we can add that in. So we'll drop that underneath here. That gives us the ability to have the coupon option. Again, full control over all of the different styling aspects of this particular widget. We're gonna come down, choose shipping methods, drop that onto the right hand side. Again, full control over this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select it. We'll apply a little bit of styling. Now we'll say we're gonna add 30 pixels of padding inside there, drop into the background, set our background color, adjust this to taste. And if you wanna make any changes to the typography and so on, you can do that here as well. Finally, we're going to add one more item, and that's going to be the option for payment. So we'll choose the checkout payment, drop that underneath there. Again, you can see this inserts everything we want. We can now customize this. So we'll add a little bit more spacing around there. And we'll also set this to be a slightly darker background just to make sure that it stands out. Again, using the same options, we can easily come in and set this to be exactly what we want, styled however we want. Same goes for any of the items inside there. So for example, we come into the style tab, come to our button option, and we can make sure this now picks up the styling that we have set throughout our site. So we're gonna set the background color. We'll set that to be this saved green color. And as you can see, that picks that styling up. And now we can come in and adjust the button typography. We'll make that just a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. And we'll also set this to be all uppercase, just so it stands out and people don't miss it. So now we've created our own custom checkout page. There's still more things we could do inside here. We can customize this to our heart's content to get exactly what we want. However, let's just click on update and test this out. 
I've made a couple of little tweaks to the design and we're just going to simply hit the preview changes just to see exactly what this looks like inside our browser. And as you can see, this now ties into our design. We've got our custom header, all the relevant information. If we want to insert any coupon codes, we can do that. Our shipping information and we can place our order when ready. Now this is just scratching the surface of what you can achieve with this free version of the Shop Engine plugin. You have access to all these amazing features at zero cost. Add to that the free version of Elemental and you have a pretty powerful platform for building more unique online stores without breaking the bank. Now if you want me to cover more of what can be done with Shop Engine Free, let me know what you'd like to cover in the comment section down below. As always, all of the applicable links are in the description. And if you got value from this video, well, why not give that thumbs up button a click? But if you didn't get value from it, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.